Hi, everyone. Um, I was practicing feeling what it feels like to have another helper, and I, I know exactly what it feels like. I already have one of those, and then I'll get so tired by the end of the day, it's, and it's gone on several weeks that I haven't found anybody, and I have a hard well, time hanging on to that. Well, so what's happening is, in your tiredness and in your not finding one, you're noticing that a great deal because mm -hmm. that's what is. And so that's getting more of your vibrational airtime, so to speak. So that's that thing you're doing that we're talking about that doesn't let the universe yield to you what you've been asking for. In other words, the helpers that you're asking for are already lined up, but you're not letting them come because you're so busy noticing that they're not there yet. And there's another thing that we want to give you. We can feel this in your vibration. It's rampant all over the room. Esther's got some of it too, in fact. And that is, almost everyone does, it's that paddling upstream thing. It's that belief that if it is worthwhile, then it's going to require some effort. It's that trying to justify my existence. It's the measuring myself and my hard work against the others who are working hard. And it's the unwillingness to accept that you're good even when you're not beating your brains out. That you deserve things to come even when you're not staying up all night or even when you're not applying yourself. It's amazingly difficult allowing things to, that you really want that are really nice to, be, to come so easily. Well, yes. we would suggest that you start taking a poll of your planet. You'll begin to notice that those who are thriving in the strongest way are those who have given up the battle. And who expect well-being to flow to them. In other words, they're no longer justifying their well-being. And if you're not there yet and you talk to them, they'll seem arrogant to you. They will really annoy you <laughs> because they expect things to go well for them and so they do. And for someone who hasn't learned the art of that expectation, it will seem like injustice, but it isn't. There is no injustice you always get whatever is flowing. Jerry and Esther have a monster bus and it's a very big machine. It's like a big automobile in that it needs to be washed regularly because it's out in the weather and going down the highways and yet it's like washing your house. <laughs> and so in many of the parks that they stay in, there are people who will come to wash them and in fact the bus is still there in a park in Portland. And when they got there, the cards that Esther had seen from the years gone by of people who will come and wash the coach were not there. And so Esther asked the woman if she had someone that she could recommend. She said, we had a really good man who came last year. And she said, well, he won't buy an ad in our newspaper anymore. And so we don't recommend him. And Esther said, well, I don't want you to recommend him. I just want you to give me his phone number. <laughs> he was really, really good. And she said, well, the management has told me that I should not recommend him. And Esther said, well, I've got it somewhere. Uh, never mind, I can go dig through my records and I can eventually find it because I really, really liked this man. And so she quietly wrote his number down and slipped it to Esther and sort, sort of like, please don't ever tell anybody that I gave you this number because I'm not supposed to give you this number. And so Jerry and Esther called this man and he began describing how hard life has been lately. I had to sell my home, he said. The economy is down. People aren't traveling as much. He said, this is only the second time this year that I've even been to this park. He said... Uh, things have been really hard for me. And Esther said, well, you know, if you would buy an ad in that newspaper, they would start recommending you again. And he went on to explain how that was unfair, that he shouldn't have to do that, and that he didn't want to do that. And, and then he did a magnificent job of washing and polishing Jerry and Esther's bus. And Jerry and Esther were busy doing their things as this man and his wife were diligently working on their bus and, and their car and their tires. They spent almost the whole day there. And so Jerry asked how much it was, and he told him the price, which was half what they are accustomed to paying in other places. And then Jerry and Esther got to talking, and Esther said, why don't we give him the $300 so that he can buy the ad? And Jerry said, that's a really good idea. And so Jerry made a list of all of the reasons why he is a spectacular service and why they wanted him back. They wanted to help him to understand all of this. And so... He came back and Jerry offered him the money and he did not want to take it. Oh no, I cannot do that. And Jerry said, 
Well, I'm not giving the money to you. I am applying the money to an experiment. Let's just see how it works. And when we come back next year, you can let us know whether the $300 paid off or not. And so the man reluctantly took it and did take the money to the office and placed the ad. And Jerry and Esther have been at the park now for about eight days. And that man has washed many, many coaches. In other words, every time they look out their window, he's over there, 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 he's over there. He's over there. He has a spring in his... St- in other words, now, what we're getting at here is that in his determination to acknowledge what was not working. He had a vibration so activated within him, but not so much that someone could not reach out to him. In other words, Esther had to find him, and it wasn't really easy for her to find him, but he had been good enough, and his vibration was enough still in harmony with that, that with some effort, even with all of his resistance, Esther was still able to find him. And Jerry and Esther, in finding him, were able to focus upon his desire enough that they re activated within him. In other words, it wasn't only the money that bought the ad which caused the woman to then begin referring him again. It was that Jerry and Esther had, in their attention to his value, had restored his own expectation within him. And so these referrals were not coming from the office. These referrals were coming because he broke loose. In other words, the other people that were there in the park, now they're noticing him. Now they're lining up with him. Now they're seeing him as his car goes by. Now he is a vibrational match to his own desire, where for months he has not been a vibrational match to his desire. And so in the same way that with a little bit of effort and caring, Jerry and Esther were able to focus strongly. Jerry spent a couple of hours on the process. The two of them talked about it. They began envisioning, and then Jerry had a very nice conversation with the man. In other words, they helped him to activate his vibration. We're just encouraging you to be self-sufficient in the activating of your vibration. In other words, most of you are like a two-headed monster. And one head saying, I can't, and the other one saying, I want to, and the other one saying, no, I can't, and the other one saying, I want to. And one saying, but it's hard, and the other one saying, no, it isn't, it's easy. And the other one saying, but I need to justify my existence through my hard work and effort. And the other one saying, there is no hard work and effort that is required, it's just point both heads in this direction. (laughs) And you do it from where you are. Now here's the thing that we really want you to hear. We've already said this, but we so want to emphasize this. So let's say you want to be over here in ease and flow and joy, and right now you're over here in overwhelmment and struggle and hardship just a little bit. And we're exaggerating that but based upon the words and vibration that you're offering, it's not far from accurate. And you want to be over there, but here you are over here. And what we want you to feel viscerally is the difference between being over here pointed that way and being over here pointed that way. Because in the moment that you stop pointing that way, which is the beating of the drum of what's not working or how hard it is or how tired you are, And you just say, I am where I am, and look where I am, and it's getting better, and I'm doing fine. And as you release that resistance, the stream turns you. And in the moment that you get turned with the flow, you feel palpable relief. Mm -hmm. So our point is, friends, we want you to get over here where you want to be. Although we have to say, get over here and it moves, get over here and it moves, get over here and it moves, get in. You had a picture of this? In other words, it's going to keep moving. So we want you to get within the vicinity of what you're wanting. We want that. But what we really want is for you to get turned in the direction of this because once you get turned in the direction of it, then it doesn't matter so much. Your proximity to where you want to be becomes less important because now you're flowing. And the more you flow, the faster you flow, and the faster you flow, the more fun you have, and the more fun you have, the more ideas you have. The more ideas you have, the more you ask for, the more you ask for, the more the energy flows, the more the energy flows, the more you have to tend to your vibration. In other words, you've got a wallop and stream going. You better get pointed in the right direction or it will make you tired. <laughs> what makes you tired is not flowing with the flow. What makes you tired is resistance. Haven't you felt the difference between getting up and doing something you really wanted to do all day? 
You expended far more energy, far more attention, and you weren't tired because there was no resistance within you. And have you felt how when you have to do something that you don't really want to do, you can hardly drag your body out of bed? It's not about physical energy, it's about vibrational energy. It's about resistance. It's about flowing or resisting. That's what it is all about, you see. So words like, it's getting better, words like, I'm figuring it out, words like, look how far I've come, look how well I'm doing, look how much I know. So we watch you, you're bored, you ask for more. You get things moving too fast, you ask for it to slow a little bit, or you ask for more help, or you ask for a better idea. You just never stop asking for the improvement from wherever you are. And the universe never stops yielding the answer. The first thing we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes is we would write on our things to do today list, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to do nothing other than revive and refresh. Now, what does that mean? Find a good place to eat, find a good place to sleep, find fun people to visit with. Oh, here you are. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to refresh myself. In other words, the first order of business would be, I'm going to do my best to get myself tuned in, tapped in, turned on to who I really am. And then from that aligned position, I'll do anything I feel like doing. But if you're tired, we would not try to move forward in action because bucking that current just causes you to gain an attitude that is counterproductive. First and foremost, line up. And then we won't be having this conversation because when you're in alignment, you don't say, how can I stop doing so much? You say, what more, what more, what more, what more, what more? Because you are your complete expansive self, you see. And everywhere you turn, People coming, saying, I can help you with this, I can help you with this, I can help you with this. We watched Esther not too long ago. Somebody said, let me get that door for you. And you know what she said? Do you know what she said? I've got it. I can open my own door holding this very big package in my arms and trying to drag my purse and my suitcase behind me. I can take care of myself. I was born to struggle and to prove my worthiness through my hard work and effort, and I don't need anybody to do something for me. And we say, let them open the damn door. <laughs> let them open the door and let them do what they want to do. Let them dovetail with you. In other words, don't try to justify your existence through your hard work. Let them all play with you. Let them all play with you in whatever way they want to. While you just focus upon the play. You just focus upon the fun. You just focus upon the success. You just focus upon the dream. You just focus on the expansion. You just focus upon the joy. You just focus upon who you are, you see. And everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. And keep falling into place, keep falling into place, keep falling into place, keep falling into place, keep falling into place. And then people will say, how do you do that? You seem to do so much with so much ease. And you say, oh, it wasn't all ease, but ease is my quest. I try to find the thoughts that are the easiest. So I'm hating, oh, not so easy. I'm loving, mm, quite easy. I'm focused upon not enough money, not easy. I'm imagining more money, oh, so much easy. I'm not liking myself hard. I'm trying to like myself easier. I'm afraid I'll fail. Oh, what a hard thought. I'm looking forward to success. Ah. Oh. In other words, you just begin to discover that thought by thought by thought, you just turn and turn and turn and turn. You getting this? We're not saying, go there, go there, go there, go there. We're saying, turn and turn and turn and turn. Right now, you've only got two choices, to feel better or worse. That's it. You don't have the choice to feel really, really good if you feel really, really bad. You don't have that choice. But you have a choice to feel better or worse. Better or worse. And when you keep choosing better, 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 you've got it. Mm. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Appreciate it.